Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is John Hammond, and welcome to our new Ubuntu desktop, our Linux distribution that we are using, and we can uh, use to really take advantage of what we want to learn and what we're going to know to jump into the CTF scene. So you can open up, open up Firefox, uh, get your web browser going, and just log back into Pico CTF. So we're looking at that long challenge for 20 points, and the challenge prompt that we saw earlier was, okay, I heard you have some delusions of grandeur about your typing speed. How fast can you go at this host and port number? So we can like select that and copy it. And just like we've been using that web shell over on the right hand side of the screen, that gave us like a Linux command line. But now that we are running Linux, we can just use the Linux command line easily on our own computer. Um, if you move your mouse to the very top left of the screen, you can go to activities and you can type in terminal if you want to, and you'll get one result here. I have a couple of others because I am running now on my host computer, not the virtual machine that I was showing you guys how to install. Um, you can click terminal and then that will prop up this, this shell here, this little command line that we can use. So I'm going to increase the font size here so you can see it a little bit better. And then we can netcat. I'm going to hit uh, control shift V to actually paste in here. Uh, the command line uses the same control C control V hotkeys that you're used to, but it adds a shift in there, uh, to actually control shift C control shift V to copy and paste. Uh, and the control arrow keys will let you jump between words or special characters. So that's what I do to move quickly in the shell. So if I netcat to this, it gives me that same prompt that we've seen before. Please give me a certain character however many times, followed by a single something. And to make things interesting, you only have a certain amount of time. So the challenge hints here said you can use the netcat can command to connect, and they recommend using Python, and it may help to have multiple windows open. So since we are in Linux, Python is installed by default. You could have even used it in the web shell, but you'll have a little bit of difficulty keeping the connection and all. So since we can have multiple windows open now, um, I can use the control windows key and left arrow key to dart this to one side of the screen, uh, left to put it like shift it to the left side of the screen. And I'll hit control alt and T at the same time to open up a new window, a new terminal. Okay. So let's use the up arrow to netcat shell into this. And then you can use Python in the other shell. And just like that, it's a command. We've invoked the interpreter or the program to run Python code. And if they want the capital N character 581 times, we can actually take that string, just the character N, and multiply that 581 times. Cool. Copy that. Control Shift C, remember, paste it in. And then the single four at the end. So I'll hit enter. And they said, all right, you got it. That was super quick, right? Because we were able to use Python to generate it for us. So the new line character kind of got in the way of our flag here, but we do see it with some recognition and trainings. Delusions become glimpses, and then a lot of hex. So Pico CTF will use that random hex bit at the end because mine will certainly be different than yours, and they'll use that to make sure that we aren't flag sharing or whatever the case may be because um, you will have a unique flag specific to your rendition of the game. So what I like to do is whenever I solve a challenge or actually am in playing capture the flag competition, I create a folder to actually put all of the challenges in. And I normally try and write a get flag script, but this one will be a little bit more difficult because it's dynamic. We won't get into writing a get flag script soon because we could have automated this entire process of connecting to that shell, connecting to that console service, um, actually being able to read out the character that they want, multiplying it, sending it, etc. We'll do that once we get into a little bit more of Python, but for now I wanted to show you this. We've got the flag, but now let's go ahead and save it somewhere. So let's make a directory, or mkdir to make directory. And then we'll call the folder, whatever we particularly want. I'll call this uh, Pico CTF. And then you can CD to change directory into Pico CTF. Cool. LS to show stuff, but there's nothing in there currently. Um, so let's make another directory called long. CD into that. You can hit tab to autocomplete if you start to type something and there's not anything else with that same set of characters at the start. If you tab, it'll autocomplete what you're trying to talk to. Control L to clear the screen. And then we can use a 
uh, program called Nano, which is just a command line text editor. Uh, you can also use VI, Vim, if you're some lead hacker and you like Vim. Uh, it may actually be better for me to kind of point you to Vim and start you off on that, but I'll admit I use Nano more than Vim. I'm a baby. So Nano, and then that's the command line like command you want to run, the program you're trying to invoke. A file name can be passed as an argument. So if you wanted to say uh, flag.txt, just to keep track of that, you can paste in the flag that you got because now you're inside Nano, this command line text editor, tells you what file you're in, it tells you whether or not you've changed the buffer, and then it shows you some like actual commands you can use with the uh, control modifier. That up arrow, that uh, kind of carrot at the very start of this will notify like a control character, which may be like, like the control key or the uh, alt key. It may be different, but in this case, it's control. Um, I can use control O to write out, like it said in the bottom. File name to write, we'll hit enter, because we do want to save it as the current file name. And then control X to exit, just like that. Cool. So ls, now our flag.txt is in that directory. We can cd up by using a period and another period to denote the parent directory. So we move up the file structure. You can see my prompt change. In the blue here, I'm no longer in picoctf long, I'm just in picoctf in that directory. Cool. So, let's ls here. See, we have long. And if you wanted to pass an ls tack a, it'll show you all of the files here. And that may be able to see more hidden files that you wouldn't normally see in a regular uh, listing. You'll see our folder here, but you'll also see other characters or other digits here. Well, not digits, but a period, right? The period itself refers to, uh, refers to the current directory that you're in. So CD period won't move you anywhere because that just means the current directory. And the dot dot, just as you saw before, means the parent directory. So that is always displayed when you ls tag a. You list everything. The It'll display the current directory and parent directory as the period and two periods. So now that we have completed that long challenge, let's mark it as complete. So I like to do that in the folder name. Um, I like to just change the name of the folder and rename it. So you can do that in Linux. With, there's not particularly like a rename command, but you can use the move command just to move it to the same location, but with a different name. That's essentially renaming it. So if I move long, again, I use tab to autocomplete, to long uh, remove the trailing forward slash, because it's trying to use that to denote that it's a directory. I'll change it to complete, like marked with the underscore and capitalized complete. So now if I ls long complete, we can go into that directory and we can cat the flag or display it out on the screen whenever we want to. Cool. So we have saved our solution. And if we wanted to, we can take note of our solution without actually writing a get flag script. So use Python to multiply a string of the original character they wanted and then add on the single character. And then control O, control X, to save and exit, and we should be good. Cool. Let's go ahead and take this flag and go in and submit it in Pico CTF down here at the very bottom. Submit, and awesome, challenge solved. You're up 20 points. Cool. So I want to give a quick shout out and some love to the people that support me. I can't say this enough. That's why I say at the end of every video, um, every everything that you give, everything that you're willing to donate does help me grow, help this channel grow, and I'm really, really grateful you're willing to go on this adventure with me. $1 a month on Patreon will give you just a shout out at the very end of the video, just like this. Can't wait for number 10. Um, $5 a month or more will give you early access to what I upload on YouTube, but before I release it, because normally I record in bulk, and maybe I'll let YouTube gradually, like on a day-by-day -day basis, slowly make things go live. If you want the content right away, as soon as it's ready, that's how you can do it. Hey, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did like the video, please do press that like button. Maybe leave me a comment. If you're willing to subscribe, and if you really want to check me out, support me, head over to Patreon. Thanks.